I am very pleased to introduce two wonderful people who work for the Black Hills Playhouse, Dakota players specifically out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We regret that uh, Deb Workman couldn't be here, the director of the Playhouse of the Dakota players. Her uh, father is ill, so they're in, the whole family's gathered in Sioux Falls. But our two presenters today, I know quite well because they are alums of the University of South Dakota College of Fine Arts Theater Department. <laughs> yeah. You, you might specifically recognize Kevin. Um, I remember, don't remember the year, but I do remember the performance. He was um, Curly in Oklahoma, VCT, the Vermilion uh, uh, Community Theater. What was the year? 2010. 2010? Oh my gosh, wow. Very good. I'd also like to introduce Megan Widener. You might know Megan. Uh, her mother is Rhonda Widener. And Megan got her master's, um, what year? Last year. Last year. Yep. And they are both out and about throughout South Dakota working with Dakota Abilities and Lifescape and the staff in Sioux Falls and staff in the play, Playhouse out in the Black Hills and so forth, bringing theater, children's theater, out to communities. And one reason we wanted to have them talk today is to talk about how theater networks and collaborates and um, what overlaps with everyone's life. It doesn't matter what walk of life they're in, theater can thread through their life. So I'm sure they've got great stories and great things to share with us. Kevin Earlywine and Megan Widener. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, like Dean Scow said, my name is Kevin Earlywine. I am the program coordinator for the Black Hills Playhouse Education Department. Um, I'm a proud USD alum. I'm glad to be back in Vermilion. Uh, what I do with the Playhouse is I manage our children's theater tour team that goes all over the state of South Dakota. And we'll talk about that more in our presentation, but they hit about 40 different cities throughout the year. They go to different communities. Um, and I manage the tour team. And then I also direct with our specialty programming, which is with Dakota Abilities and Lifescape. We're really excited. Our production of Elf Junior the Musical is going to be going on on December 13th and 14th at Augustana University. And we're busy rehearsing that as we speak. We just entered our second week of rehearsals. And I've got a cast of about 60 that I'm directing. And we've got ages five all the way up to 65 of all abilities. So we're, we're going to be talking about that too. Yeah. Uh, and as uh, Dean Scouse said, I am Megan Widener. I am the uh, education production coordinator, which means that I'm in charge of uh, all the things that Kevin doesn't do on stage. Uh, <laughs> so Kevin gets to work with the cast. Uh, I also get to help with those things sometimes, but I'm in charge of making sure that we have a set and sound and lights and costumes for all of our productions, whether that is on a small scale, so it means I'm doing it all myself, or for ELF, we have a production team, and so I get to uh, coordinate everybody together working to put that together. We just finished a production of Romeo and Juliet with Dakota Abilities, which is a adult program in Sioux Falls for adults with disabilities. And it was really, really cool. We'll talk about that in our presentation as well. Uh, we started that in August, and we just did the show on Halloween. And it was a lot of fun. So uh, we're here to talk about the Black Hills Playhouse as a whole. Many people don't know that the Black Hills Playhouse is on this side of the state. Uh, can I ask, who, who's heard of the Black Hills Playhouse here? Great. That's more than usual. Uh, <laughs> who has been out to the Playhouse? Okay. Awesome. Okay, well, the Black Hills Playhouse is a summer, summer stock professional theater company out in Custer State Park, and you should all go visit it. An unusual space in an unlikely place and more far-reaching in South Dakota than you might think. The Black Hills Playhouse has been associate, associated with the University of South Dakota and has resided in Custer State Park for 75 years. We're very proud to be going into our 75th season this year. The university pays for the salary of the executive director. South Dakota Game, Fish, and Parks provides infrastructure support. And uh, BHP Incorporated raise, raises all of the funding for our programs and employs the rest of the company. We currently have 10 employees who work year round and maintain offices in Rapid City and Sioux Falls. And our board, including Dean Scow, is made up of 24 individuals and is region wide. It was really one man's dream in 1946 to put a playhouse in Custer State Park. This is a picture of Dr. Warren M. Lee. 
uh, who was the dean of the College of Fine Arts here at USD, and the building over there is named after him as well. Doc Lee, as we call him. Uh, it was his dream to put uh, a playhouse in Custer State Park. And he had two goals for the BHP, which was to bring audiences the best theater performances possible and to provide work in South Dakota for artists. This is a picture of the BHP when it first started. This is the Camp Lodge, a civilian conservation core camp in Custer State Park that was built in 1934 and it was abandoned in 1942. Men in this camp created much of the infrastructure in the park that still exists today, different ro roads, dams, and bridges. Our first seasons were, were actually kind of unique. We lived in, they lived and rehearsed at the Camp Lodge, but they took the shows to different locations because there was no theater in the park and they traveled with a big white tent, which these days is the most expensive way to do theater, but they would travel all around and do the shows. Um, our 1946 performances had performances in Rapid City, Hot Springs, Sturgis, Lead, Igloo, and the State Game Lodge, and there was no electricity in the camp except for a 1500 watt generator that operated for one hour in the evening. And if Me Megan and I have both worked out at the Playhouse, the weather is such an interesting factor, and living in the woods for three months, it's quite unique for sure. We both have crazy stories about what that's like. <laughs> the Camp Lodge was then repurposed for the new theater company with the blessing of the state of South Dakota and support from the university of, and from the support from the university here in Vermilion. In 1945, the governor of South Dakota, Merrill Q. Sharp, gave the okay to occupy near Legion Lake. And in 1947, our Frontier Theater was built. Here's a picture from the Legend of Devil's Gulch which was written by Doc Lee, and it was introduced and played every Monday night through 1980, and it was a great opportunity for our company members to come together, cast and crew, and put on this play, and it was something that people looked forward to. It was a historical fantasy. There's a picture of that. Plans for our new theater moved forward to replace the Frontier Tent. However, there was a tragedy that struck. This is a picture of Doc Lee in the ruins of our, that was going to be the built theater and it burned down 10 days before the 1951 season. And there's this great story of Doc Lee going into a, getting into a truck and driving into the fire and saving all of the equipment he could before it all burned down. The PX building was quickly renovated to become the new theater. Here's a picture from 1955. The South Dakota Department of Game, Fish, and Parks Commission approved the construction of a new theater. On the right, you can see the foundation for what was going to become the Warren M. Lee Theater. And that was completed in 1956 and first used in 1957. That was also the first year that 24-hour electricity was extended to the campus. We did our first musical, Finian's Rainbow, that year. And this is how it looks today. In 1968, the Black Hills Playhouse was really on the rise and we had record-breaking record audience attending. Uh, th this is a picture of our 1968 comp company. The Odd Couple by Neil Simon was our most popular show that year and it averaged 300 people per show. Now our theater seats a little over 300, so that's huge for that day to have that many people coming to see the show. And in 2020, as a nod to that season, we're gonna be doing The Odd Couple again, but this time it's gonna be a little bit different. The actors who are playing Oscar and Felix are gonna be alternating roles every performance. So that'll be quite, <laughs> quite the challenge. <laughs> quite the challenge. I think about that, it gives me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> In 1975, Doc Lee retired from service after 30 years. He passed away in 1978, just shy of his 70th birthday. And it really was the end of an era for the BHP. Our management has changed over the years. Linda Anderson is our current executive director and she started in 2010. Uh, Dan Workman is our executive director. He is the theater chair at Augustana University in Sioux Falls and he started in 2011. We've also had hundreds of board members who have contributed enormously over the years. This is Hap Haberman. He was one of our oldest living alums. He was an actor and, an, and a director, and he served at the BHP from 1947 all the way through 2000. 
and he passed away in 2017. This was a quote of his. The reputation of the Black Hills Playhouse is built on the quality of the performance of the whole cast rather than on the individuals. The Playhouse Company is a team. The lead in one production may be a walk-on in the next. We do not operate on a star system. And this mantra that Hab has really is still reflective today. This past summer, I was the male lead in Sideshow, which was written by South Dakota native Bill Russell, who we'll talk a little bit about in a, in a little while. Um, I was in Sideshow, and then the next show, I was in the chorus of Mamma Mia. And being in the chorus of Mamma Mia was way harder <laughs> than being in Sideshow. Like, I just remember running. Um, but that's still true today. This is a picture of Haberman Hall, which was built in 19, 1996. If you look, it's a little dark, but if you could see on the lower right-hand corner, that's a picture of a buffalo. That The buffalo, all the time, they'll be in the camp, and you might be walking and just see a buffalo. This summer, Matt Nesmith and I, Matt teaches over it at uh, the Fine Arts Building, and we were out running one morning, and we happened to run into a buffalo. So that happens quite a bit. This new structure was made, made for picnics, outings, meetings, and rehearsals as a gift from the new Black Hills Playhouse Alumni Association in honor of Hap and Ellie's, uh, in honor of Hap and Ellie, Ellie Haberman at the 50th anniversary. Yep, so this was the Play, uh, Black Hills Playhouse Alumni Association was uh, very new at this time, and uh, they are still going today. They are a way to keep all of us alumni connected. They send out four newsletters every year to update us on what's going on at the Playhouse, what the new season's gonna be, how the last season went, um, any events that are coming up, and they help to uh, plan all of the anniversary reunions. We still, we actually do use this for rehearsals. All of Mamma Mia was rehearsed out there in the heat. <laughs> so it's too hot to be inside. It's too hot. To, yeah, it was. Uh, this is a picture of different alum, alums that came back for, to celebrate our anniversaries. This was our 60th anniversary in 2005. This was the 70th anniversary in 2015. And I'm right there with blue hair. <laughs> Dean Scow, are you in this picture? We were trying to find you, but the picture is so tiny. Top left, top left. I'll find it later. <laughs> when the Playhouse needed major renovations in 2011, former cast favorites showed up to fundraise with a performance of party pieces, and our alums have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the BHP through our Alumni Association, and that's something that we're extremely proud of. Starting in 2011, we have had $1.5 million in different renovations. All of our building codes have met through construction projects. We've had things like a new costume shop put in with partnership with the South Dakota Army National Guard. We've had our snack bar refurbished, and also our dormitories have been updated as well for the housing for our company members. Here's Linda Anderson and Deb Workman, our executive director, Dan. or Dan Workman. Sorry, what did I say, Linda? You said Deb. Deb. We'll talk about Deb, too. <laughs> Linda Anderson and Dan. I talk about Deb so much. That's it's a, just yeah. habit. Linda and Dan. Who, uh, Linda is our executive director. Dan Workman is our artistic director. And they're really focused on bringing the Black Hills Playhouse into different and new directions. This is our new mission statement. The Black Hills Playhouse delivers exceptional theater programs that engage diverse people and strengthen South Dakota communities. We're gonna talk about this in a little while, but Megan and I really had the opportunity to see that firsthand on our children's theater tour. We, we toured all over the state for two years and really saw the difference that it made in, in young minds and to be able to, I mean, I just received a letter, I haven't even told you this, I received a letter last night from one of our students who's in 4-H in Selby and it said, thank you so much for making me the artist that I am and for making me want to act. You taught me how to act and you really are an inspiration and that means so much that we, that was Eli. Do you remember Eli? I love Eli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's great. So we, we, we see it on a daily basis how, much this, how important this programming is, especially our education department. This is, uh, we talked about the improvements that were made. This is our snack bar on the left. That is actually the, the oldest building on campus. It's the only original CCC uh, building still standing. Mm -hmm. yep. And then on the right is the playhouse as it is today. That's the theater. 
Great. So I'm going to talk about our education programming, uh, which is much more what Kevin and I do uh, on a daily basis. So over on the left here, we have the Dakota Players Tours. This is a picture from Treasure Hunt, and clearly he is acting very well because they're supposed to be angry scorpions, <laughs> as you can tell by the angry eyebrows on their hats. Uh, and then on the right here, we have some pictures of our BHP Junior Summer Performing Arts Camps. And we've been... The Dakota Players started um, as the Children's Theater Company of South Dakota, and we are celebrating our 20th anniversary, and then our BHP Junior Summer Performing Arts Camps are celebrating their fifth anniversary this year, and they uh, take place on the Placerville campus every summer. We do a high school and a middle school camp, and they come out, they learn, they audition a show in the beginning of the week, and they perform at the end of the week, and last year we did Footloose and what was the junior show? Rock and Robin Hood. Rock and Robin Hood was the middle school show. There we go. And they also go and tour uh, the Black Hills Playhouse campus as part of their um, week. I'm going to just move this and then you can push the buttons and I can stand here. Great. So we have our new education office in Sioux Falls. Um, we just got this space. Uh, prior to this, Deb was running everything for this company out of her basement as a home office. And it's been amazing to get to new into the, move into this new space. We have so much room for all the creation that we do. We have costume storage, set storage. We keep all of our things from our tours that uh, we send out. And we also create a lot of costumes for all of our um, productions. So it's amazing to have this space. And this is Deb Workman, who's our uh, director of education. And she and Dan uh, founded the Children's Theater Company of South Dakota 20 years ago. And she has been working harder than anyone I know to keep it going and keep it spreading throughout the state for 20 years. And as we talked about, our specialty programming, a big part of that is working with adults and kids with disabilities and performing theater. And as we've been moving into it, we've learned more and more about how theater connects with health and well-being and how it can be inclusive, empowering, and extraordinary. So we focus on how we can empower these actors to learn new things and try something different. Um, Part of it is we, uh, it strengthens communication and memory skills. We talk about teamwork. We learn about theater. They have the opportunity to make choices for themselves and find new independence. And any of our shows might include uh, actors who are nonverbal in wheelchairs, have multiple disabilities, or may be developmentally de delayed. Excuse me. Uh, and these people are capable of expressing choice, joy, and enjoy performing. And for many, it's the first opportunity they've had to perform on stage. So this is a couple of pictures from some of our recent shows. And we partner with LifeScape and Dakota Abilities in Sioux Falls right now, our, our um, big productions for the year. So on the left here is a picture of myself, and his name is Dalton. This was a show called You Look Marvelous, which was a retelling of The Emperor's New Clothes. It was and actually written by South uh, uh, Vermilion Steve Miller. Yes, there we go. Um, and so Dalton and I were the suzerains or the emperors of the city and got to show everyone our new outfits at the end of the play, which was, always made him laugh and he would stop acting. But it was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and then on the right here is a picture of our performance of Rock and Robin Hood at Poet this last year. Here are some pictures of um, the people we've been working with at Dakota Abilities. Up on the top left is a picture of Macbeth, which we did last year, which was pretty intense from what I've heard. I wasn't there. And in the middle is a picture of our show, A Charlie Bob Christmas, which was written by Shelby Roberts. She is a client at Dakota Abilities. She uh, uses a Dynavox machine to speak for her, and she is a playwright and a novelist. So when she reads you something, she plays it off of her machine, and it is an incredibly different way of creation. And um, this was her first play, I think, that we'd put on, and it was a story about how she got her doll, Charlie Bob. You'll see the little cabbage patch there that he's holding. That's Charlie Bob. Um, and after we had done this show with her, she and Deb took a um, stage uh, or script analysis class with Dan at Augustana, and she, uh, um, what's it called? Audited the class. And uh, after that, 
Shelby's writing has become incredibly detailed and nuanced, and we did another show of hers this fall, along with Romeo and Juliet, which was called Charlie Bob Meets the Ghosts of Longfellow, and it was about her doll Charlie Bob sneaking out of the house to break into the Longfellow Center, which is where Dakota Abilities has their daily programming, and try to find ghosts. And it was hilarious, and lots of meta-theatrical jokes, like the narrator was yelling at the sound people for not doing the spooky noises they were supposed to and it was a great time and um, just incredible to see how much she's grown as a writer and these are a few of our productions this year in Sioux Falls so as I said last spring we did Robin Hood at Poet which was a huge hit uh, we just did Romeo and Juliet at Dakota Abilities this is a picture of Romeo and Juliet at the end of the show and then also down at the bottom is Charlie Bob and his friend Rosemary uh, getting ready for their adventure and then in the center here, we just started working on Elf Jr. the Musical, which is gonna be on December 13th and 14th at Augustana University. And as Kevin said, we have a cast of about 60 people. It's huge and wild and hilarious, and I hope that you all get to come and see it because I think it's gonna be a really fun, fun night. Yeah, a little bit about Elf. If you, has anybody seen the movie Elf? Raise your hand if you've seen the movie Elf. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a holiday classic. The, the young man that's playing Buddy the Elf, his name is Jason, and he was a, he's a student at USF, and he's a young man who has autism. And when he came to audition, there was nobody else to play this part. He was Buddy the Elf. He is just so funny and fun to work with, and he's just a nice young man. And he, he, I asked him, I said, have you ever done any theater before? And he said, nobody's ever given me the opportunity. I audition, but nobody cast me. And so what a great opportunity for him to come and audition and blow us away. And yeah. we're a place that everybody's welcome. It's, it doesn't matter who you are. And uh, just to be, be working with him, it's been very, very awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, Dakota Players is our touring theater company. And in 2019, we were able to visit 37 locations about around South Dakota. And we stay at each one of those locations for a week. So it's a great time. On Monday, we have auditions. On Fridays, we perform. It's 20 hours of rehearsal. It is fast and furious. We can cast up to 54 kids. And we just have a great time with them. Um, and as I, we talked about, we've been all over the state in urban and rural areas, including India, Indian reservations. Our current touring show is Exodus for Zebra, which is about a zebra who is born without any stripes. And so they travel the savannah and learn about how we can fit into our communities wherever we are. We're getting ready to celebrate the 75th season right now. Um, but before we do that, we're going to look at some of our past productions, Oklahoma. If you look close, you might notice some USD alumni in here. I don't know if there's any in this picture. I know there's some in the next one. Oh, wait, Lucas Austin. Tachek is from um, USD. Austin's in there. Kit Asphalt here playing the uh, uh, angel. There we go. Josie Kosick. Um, Kit Asphalt's also in this one. Young Frankenstein, Adam's Family Musical. And then we've got a picture of our BHP Junior Camp that when they got to go and visit campus, uh, they had also decided to perform that first number from Adam's Family. So they got to come and meet the cast, get a visit, get a tour of the set, and take pictures with their doubles. So these are both of the Wednesday Adams. This is To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, Sherwood was a Robin Hood play last year, Shrek the Musical. Sideshow, like we talked about earlier, was directed by Bill Russell, who also wrote it. It was a Tony-nominated script, and uh, Bill Russell is originally from Spearfish, so when we decided we wanted to do Sideshow, we invited him out to the Playhouse, and he came, and it was a great time from everything I've heard from Kevin. <laughs> we also did Mamma Mia this last year, and we just opened our annual holiday sale, which sells all of our tickets in bundles, which is a great Christmas present. That's usually what I get from my parents. And... Um, this year, we're going to be doing The Odd Couple, Something Rotten, uh, Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, and The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. And I would usually describe those, but I'm going to skip through it because we're running out of time. So if anybody has questions, these are all really, really awesome shows, and I would love to talk to you about them. Um, and as we move forward, we're continuing to grow and thrive and providing opportunities for anybody to participate in theater in South Dakota. <coughs> as we move forward into our next 75 years, like I said, we want to create opportunities for the multitude, multitudes of artists in South Dakota to stay and thrive here with us. Um, and we continue improvements of our physical plant in Custer State Park. And we hire 
every role across the board, and we try to employ Midwestern artists. So we hope to see you this next summer at the Playhouse or next month in Sioux Falls to see Elf Jr. And if you uh, want to help us out or are interested in talking to us more, please consider supporting this important work through volunteering, board participation, sponsorships, and donations. And to learn more, you can contact Deb Workman or Linda Anderson, our education director and executive director. All right, that's everything. <laughs> oh, we're running out of time. Great. We know that was a lot of information. Yeah. I'm actually not going to ask a question. I'm going to come on my address. It's related. Um, so I'm a BHP alum. I kind of grew up out of the Playhouse, um, thanks to my dad. And um, I was born in the Playhouse. And uh, we have a I would have never came to South Dakota without Ron. Ron was the one that I met. Any, yeah? My wife and I go to at least two productions out in the Playhouse every summer, and I've always been amazed at how few people go. Why is that? There's so many tourists out there, and there's, there's so much of an opportunity to see a variety of productions. I, I learned recently that 20% of our audience is the tourists, the tourists that are in the area. 80% of our audience is from local audiences in the area. That's a great question. Yeah, I think uh, part of it is we're out in Custer State Park. So nice people don't know we're there. Um, but also something that's hard is to advertise shows that people don't know. Uh, our big sellers are usually the two musicals in the middle, especially the one that's at the end of July into August, um, which was Mamma Mia last year. And this mm -hmm. year is The Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. And uh, those ones always get the big sellers because people know musicals, people know what they're coming to see. And so I think it's harder sometimes with those shows that people don't know. And so that's why we put out advertising. And this year I know we're looking into uh, more TV ads plus uh, digital uh, marketing that we can boost through social media. Um, and a big part of that actually last summer we did uh, 20 short videos about our cast and crew and the production process. And we had a 300% boost on our social media. And then we almost sold out almost every show of Mamma Mia. Yeah, all I know when two. I was there when we did Shrek, we sold out every show. So, but again, that's Shrek. Everybody knows what Shrek is. And so I think that's part of the challenge that we are working towards. I don't know if you can afford it or logistically make it happen. Mm -hmm. Get every person that comes in and buys a park pass and have a little leaflet. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. That would be great. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you.